Cool. All right. Well, we're three minutes in, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to share my screen here. And the whole entire screen. All right. And jump into the presentation. Again, I want most of this session to be the actual uh, live, live demo. So I'm going to uh, run through these slides pretty quickly. But thank you so much for joining. This is Coding with Chat GPT, um, creating a website from scratch. I think it'll be pretty, pretty fun. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, chat with me today. Um, my name is Keenan. Uh, you see him pronouns. Uh, I'm currently a software engineer at a startup called Kojo Technologies. We're in the construction software space. Um, I'm currently living in San Francisco. Um, and yeah, in the past couple months, I've been using, I think like a lot of you, uh, I've been really excited with some of the new AI tools, both excited and maybe slightly nervous, uh, like ChatGPT. Um, and I've been using it to try to see how it can assist uh, my job as a software engineer. Um, but also, you know, this presentation, you know, is not just for software engineers. Um, the point is that, you know, we can build a website, we can build it quickly, and you don't need to have mastery in, in uh, software engineering or coding skills to do so. Um, again, yeah, if you would like to follow along, there's a couple of tools that you need. I pinned it, uh, a pinned message in the chat. Um, it's just a published Notion page that kind of goes through these steps a little bit more. So if you'd like to follow along, um, please get get set up and so you can. Uh, but yeah, a couple of things that we will be using. Um, you know, the free chat GPT account is totally fine. I'll be using the paid one, but we're still gonna, um, just because it's a little bit faster, really. Um, cool, so here's what we'll be going over. We're gonna talk about chat GPT a little bit. Um, I'll go over some of the tools, additional tools that we'll be using. And then most of the section, like I said, is gonna be the actual live demo. Um, I don't really know how it's gonna turn out. You know, chat GPT uh, gives different results every time I've uh, tried doing this. Um, so it's really, really fun. So we'll be doing this uh, together and hopefully we come out with a result that is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. And we'll have it deployed to a live URL by the end of this hour. And hopefully there'll be some time for Q&A at the end. I can stay also for a couple of minutes afterwards. Um, so if folks have additional questions, I'm happy to stay on. But that is the outline. Um, but yeah, when I was talking about this before, but yeah, put in the chat, you know, what have we been using chat GPT for? Um, see if other people have any other good ideas that can help inspire you. Um, there's been a lot of good things uh, so far. And so I'm curious if folks want to uh, discuss more what they've been using it for. Um, pretty cool stuff. Uh, but yeah, let's talk about what ChatGPT is a little bit. Um, you know, LLMs, large language models, are really in right now. There's tons of startups. There's tons of new tools that are it seems like they're coming out every single day. Um, you know, there's all this kind of machine learning. Chat GPT in particular, you know, it's been trained on just tons and tons and trillions of, of tokens and data um, across the internet, across all these different sources. Um, and it can perform, yeah, a really wide range of tasks. Um, you know, text generation, which is a lot of what we'll be doing here. Um, I've seen some cool language translation and uh, it is also always, you know, learning and improving. Um, and there's a lot of details on how it works that I certainly don't understand. On OpenAI's website, there's a chart that looks like this, um, which kind of has a bit kind of a high level overview of how the model was trained. Um, and, you know, I definitely am not an expert in any regard uh, about machine learning, about all this AI stuff. Um, you know, I took maybe one class <laughs> about something in college, uh, but I'm not an expert. I'm not going to tr try to explain all the underpinnings of how ChatGPT works. But um, I, you know, if you want to look up more, I would uh, encourage you to do so because there's some pretty cool math under the surface that is happening there. But uh, yeah, I asked ChatGPT, you know, why should I lead a session? And here's a good example, I think, on show some of the, the good parts about ChatGPT and the bad parts. Um, and, you know, we're on Code Mentor, show, you know, share my knowledge is great, help others learn, cool, build reputation. Yeah, sure, I guess. Uh, earn money. So that's definitely not happening right now. Um, but it is funny, right? So ChatGPT is going to give you very confident answers. You know, it doesn't necessarily, uh, it's not going to say, well, you know, I don't know. It's going to spit out uh, a lot of confidence in its answers. Um, and so I'm certainly not earning money in this, but I hope that we can do the, the rest of these steps, expand, you know, expand our networks, share knowledge and that sort of thing. Anyways, uh, moving along, you know, how can, how can ChatGPT help us code? How can we use it to write code? Um, and there's a bunch of different things here too. You know, I definitely can provide code snippets and we'll be doing a lot of that in this session. Um, I know folks have also talked about, you know, uh, using it for documentation. I'm pretty sure it was trained across, you know, Stack Overflow, which is a tool that a lot of software engineers <laughs> know and love. 
Um, and so it can be used to answer a lot of those similar questions or documentation, you know, asking about, you know, what does this Lodash method do? And I think it does a pretty good job about spitting out um, responses about that. You can also use it just to debug error messages, you know, just pasting in an error message is something that I'll definitely try um, to see what it says or, put, you know, posting in your snippet of code and your error message and see what it says. Those, you know, definitely pros and cons. Um, we also do a pretty good job about suggesting improvements or best practices with our code. Um, you know, you can paste in some code and ask, you know, how could we refactor this in a more efficient way, for example. Um, additionally, it can actually help brainstorm new ideas. You know, I know someone uh, before we got started said they, you know, named their company using some ideas from ChatGPT. Um, we're going to also brainstorm, I think, kind of later in our session, some additional ideas for our website using ChatGPT and then implement them, which is which is pretty fun. But if there's one thing you take away from the session. Um, is that you can build a custom website. We're gonna be building like a portfolio website, kind of like a personal website that you would use, you know, like your name.com, keenzucker.com for, for in my case. Um, and it really helps lower the bar to create a custom website from scratch. I think there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of good no code tools like Squarespace, like Wix that you can create a, a personal website, but um, using ChatGPT, you don't have to be an expert. You don't need mastery of HTML and CSS and JavaScript. Um, you really can just use ChatGPT, use good prompts, um, and use good iteration to find a unique style that that works for you, as well as you know image generation tools like Dolly um, and tons of other ones to add some you know <laughs> images to your website, all that sort of stuff. Uh, what I found ChatGPT to be really really useful for personally is just overcoming kind of blank canvas syndrome, right? Like it's it's hard to start a lot of things. I'm starting a, a website from scratch. I wouldn't really know where to start, you know, which which section do I start on? And so it's really nice just to have a tool that can give you some boilerplate code, put up some examples, um, give you just some content that you can go and edit and kind of iterate on from there, um, which I think is really, really useful, at least in my process. Um, and, I'll, and I'll get a little bit more into that as we get started. Um, but yeah, if you want to follow along, you know, you can help build a website uh, as we do this. Uh, and I think it'll be pretty fun. Cool. Um, yeah, some other tools we're using just in this session. Um, I'm not going to go over them in too much detail. Um, we're going to be using React.js. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have heard about it. It's a JavaScript library, uh, kind of a front end framework, building UI um, using this kind of component based architecture. It uses a virtual DOM under the under the surface, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to be using it mostly just because uh, I'm most familiar familiar with it. I use it in my uh, you know professional career, but also because React is a really popular uh, kind of front-end framework. It's used by a lot of different developers. I think it's still like the most popular right now. Um, I was reading, you know, some kind of JavaScript reports that came out in the last year or two, and so there's a lot of you know training data that that ChatGPT has had for React. So I think it does a pretty good job uh, spitting out um, good React code or at least decent React code, um, even if there are more kind of hip uh, <laughs> front-end frameworks like Svelte or like Vue, that sort of thing. Um, we're going to be using npm, or stands for Node Package Manager which is used to uh, install different uh, packages, basically snippets of other people's code, um, and we can reuse that. So we're gonna be using uh, Create React App. If you all have heard of it, it's basically a way to just write a boilerplate React app. It gets you all of the, um, you know, some scripts and a bunch of useful stuff um, so we can get started pretty quickly. Uh, and we're also gonna deploy, or I'm gonna deploy using uh, Vercel, which is a cloud platform tool that just makes it really, really simple for deploying a static website uh, to, the, to the internet, basically just you know, takes like one command. Um, which is cool, and it plays really, really nicely with Create React App. And so those are the tools I'll be using. Um, but you know, you definitely can use any of the tools that you want. And I'd be curious to kind of try, you know, building with React, and then try building with Vue, and then try building with Angular, and seeing seeing how you do. But we're not going to have time to do that in this session. Um, cool. Well, I think that's it for my slides. Because again, I want to spend most of the time. We're only about ten minutes in, which is great. And so let's go ahead and just jump into the demo. Um, where all the magic is going to happen. Um, again, if you want to follow along, there's that pinned message in the chat, which is just basically these instructions of what we're going to be doing. Um, cool. And so here I have, I'm going to you know, have just a new chat GPT window. I'm going to be using you know, just the default version 3.5. Version 4 is going to give us probably better results, but it's uh, you know, rate limited right now, and it's just a little bit slower. Um, and so we're just going to go ahead and get started. And uh, you know, I don't really know exactly what's going to happen, and we'll we'll find out together. But hopefully, you find it uh, interesting, and I'll kind of show some some uh, best practices, some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Um, and yeah, and one more thing to note, you know, this 
where this code that we're going to be writing isn't necessarily, I'm not advocating that it's going to be best practices. I'm not advocating that, you know, you should use it in your production database. Um, but the point is that we can build a website, we can get it live, uh, and we can do that very quickly and like pretty effectively. Um, so that's kind of the goal of this session. Cool. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to ask about creating a portfolio website. Um, cool. I'm going to say, hi, I'd like to create a personal portfolio website. I'd like to use create react app because that's a package we're going to be using to do so. Can you show me how to get set up? Great. And you know, this is basically the similar, very similar steps. Um, oh, interesting. Using create react app. Okay. It looks like it's not using create react app. Oh, create react app dash. Oh, funny! It's asking us to make the port, the the folder first, and then using the command. That's interesting. We can also use um, a different command. I know of just uh, using create react create react app and the title of our folder. This looks like it's going a little bit out of order here. Making sure we have Node installed, which we do. Um, but I am going to just copy these commands. I'm just going to go over to my uh, new folder here. I'm using mpx create React app, we're gonna call it code mentor website. Cool, um, and this is gonna run. It's gonna be, again, use this NPM package called create React app, but you're just building us a bunch of boilerplate. It just takes a couple of minutes and we will uh, continue from there. I'm gonna let that go and come back and start with my next prompt here. We have all of our files in our source directory um, and I'll open up the code. And we can we can move on. Let me see if that's done creating. This might take another minute or two. And it's basically building a bunch of package. Create React app definitely isn't. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for like a production uh, production scale um, company. But again, for just a simple website, it's really really useful because it gives us a bunch of useful scripts and a bunch of boilerplate code. Um, so I'm gonna open this up in a VS Code window here. I'm gonna actually pull this over here. Um, and we can see our Code Mentor website. And here's the code already that Create React app gave us. Um, there's a bunch of stuff, you know, there's some like setup tests and report web vitals. We're not gonna worry about any of that sort of stuff. Um, but if we go back and we try just the command npm start, which we will do in this directory, um, oh, I need to navigate into the directory first. Yes. And then I'll run npm start. And we should uh, spin up our local development server on localhost 3000 with our create React app. So again, we're not really using ChatGPT quite yet. We're just using create React app, which does a similar thing of helping us do some boilerplate. And there we go. We have our really basic React app set up. And you know, if we add some text and we save this will hot reload, which is really, really nice. As you can see, now it says howdy here, and we can go from there. Um, cool, so that's the really basic setup. And now it's time for the more interesting stuff, which is actually building out the portfolio website. So I'm going to ask a little bit more of a specific prompt this time. Because um, when we have you know, a portfolio website, there's some you know, similar elements I think a lot of personal websites have. You know, it's just Googling here, for example, right? Like, what does a portfolio website have? You know, a lot of them have, you know, an about page, you know, with some, you know, maybe a photo of them, you know, links across the top for maybe, you know, links to a contact page, there's links to your experience, to your work, that sort of thing, right? You know, a creative factor, maybe a, some some kind of funky uh, eye-catching visual on the main page, and then, you know, your about page, your work, contact, that sort of thing. A lot of them, you know, are roughly similar. They each have their own, you know, little flair. Maybe you're using a fun little icon. But again, across the top, we're kind of having similar similar pages here. So we will be doing something roughly similar and we can again iterate as we go. I'm gonna go back here and I wanna use for the separate pages, um, another NPM package called React Router DOM, which is gonna basically do our um, different you know pages. Um, and so it still acts like a single uh, page application, but it actually changes the routes. So I'm gonna ask uh, for that. I'm gonna ask a pretty specific prompt here. So great. Let's, um, I'd like to create a portfolio website 
that has separate pages using Re or React router DOM. I'd like the pages to be a home page about idea portfolio that has our, our projects and contact page. Can you show me the code? That's a little bit more specific. You know, I want to have, I want to use React Router DOM, and I want to use this package. And I want the specific pages. And here's the code that it gives us. So first, because this is a new NPM package, it's telling us to install, which is very good. It's a step that I sometimes forget. I'm going to stop my server. I'm going to install this package called React Router DOM. It should go pretty quick. And here is our about page. And here are our sub pages. Oh, it looks like it's giving us a little navigation, which is really, really nice. And an example of our home page. So I'm just going to go down here and just, you know, this little snippet. I'm just going to copy that whole thing. We're going to go into app.js. I'm going to paste it. And let's also see a little bit more what it says. So we have, you can see our, uh, you know, it's asking for a kind of a subdirectory for pages where it has our separate components, which is great. It has our little, looks like our little nav bar. And it has a switch which has our different routes. So that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go in and create these new pages because I know we're going to need those. So I'm going to create a new directory called pages like it asked for. And I'm just going to add these home.js, about.js, portfolio.js, and contact.js. Great. We have our app. And it looks like it gave us, I think, an example for just the home component. Good. I'm going to copy and paste that whole thing in. And I'm going to ask it for the other three pages, just some dummy content for us to get started. Um, show me the point code for about portfolio and contact. Hopefully, just gives us a pretty basic example for each of those. And it looks like it is. That looks uh, perfect for the time being. So a little about page that says, you know, hey, my name is blank. I'm a blank. Nice. I'm going to go back and add our portfolio. Link to projects. Cool. That's fine for now. And contact page, which just has some basic stuff and a <laughs> link to my your, my LinkedIn profile. Perfect. Um, cool. So now it looks like we're all lined up here. I'm going to go back and refresh. Oh, I need to restart my server since I installed that new package. I'll restart the server and see what we get. And oh no, there is an error. Um, and so <laughs> I was actually expecting this. Um, and uh, But instead of just uh, fixing it, like I know the actual issue, I'm going to show how you can use ChatGPT to help debug these sort of issues. Um, so it says, you know, export switch is not found in React Router DOM. You may know why, you may not, but I'm going to ask ChatGPT that I'm having an error and see what it says. An error. I'm just going to copy and paste this whole thing in. Cool. So let's see what it says. Okay. The error message says that switch was not found. Correct. The problem with your installation. Okay, maybe. Um, make sure you have it installed. Great. Check that you're importing switch. Okay, great. We are. If you're on an older version, it might not be available. Interesting. Um, cool. And I wonder, uh, I can't see the, the chat as I am uh, doing this presentation, but if, you're, if you think you might know uh, what the issue is, put it, put it in the chat. You can show off a little bit. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, if this isn't that helpful, you know, we could try these things, make sure it's imported, right? Is switch imported correctly? Let's look at our code. Yeah, you know, that looks right. That looks right. But what it said about switch being, uh, you know, it might not be a part of the current uh, React Router DOM. I think that's uh, in, in the right direction. So I'm gonna ask another question. Um, is the switch component a part of the latest version of React Router DOM. And here's a nice example of a um, where you can potentially get tripped up using ChatGPT. So again, there's a lot of confidence, right? The switch component is a part of the latest version of React Router DOM version of five. Um, as you can see in the docs here, there's a version six. Uh, and I know that 
for a fact that a switch is not included as a part of the latest version, which is version six. Um, and so, you know, again, ChatGPT is gonna be very, very confident. It's gonna tell us that it's not a part um, of the version, but I know that it is not part of version. It was replaced in version six by a component called routes, um, which operates relatively similar, um, but I could be really confused by this. Um, so I'm gonna tell it the correction and we'll see, we'll see if it owns up to its mistake. I'm pretty sure switch was replaced by routes in React router DOM v6. Aha, this is I am correct. I feel very vindicated and apologize for the confusion, um, which is you know a good lesson that at least ChatGPT will be polite even if it is not always correct. And it also gives us an updated example of the code um, that has our uh, router component or routes rather than switch. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy paste this. You can also notice that it didn't uh, keep the context of our little nav bar here. Um, and so I'm gonna paste this, oops. I'm gonna go back and see if that error solved, which it is, which is great. Now we have our website. I should be able to navigate to the other routes. Cool, here's my about, here's my contact. Um, but we don't have that navigation. So I'm gonna ask, rather than just adding it to this component, I think we can add a new navbar component. So I think that is the next step. I'm going to add a navbar component that can switch between the pages. Show me how. And so this is adding a new navbar component and it looks like, oh, interesting. It looks like it's putting the nav bar just in the, the root directory, the same place that the about page is, um, which is fine. Well, I guess we can just do that. So I'm going to, you know, if you wanted to ask it to put it in a specific place, you definitely can. I'm not going to be super picky. Um, again, this is not necessarily the best practice code, um, but I'm just going to do what it asks for now. And we're going to copy this code in to our navbar.js. We're going to refresh. And here we go. We have our little nav bar, we have our home, we have our, we have our portfolio, and we have our contact. And so here we go. We have now, you know, we've been working for what, about 20 minutes and we have a, a successful, a, a fully functional website. Um, obviously it doesn't look great and that's the next kind of fun bit, but here we have the basics of our portfolio website and, you know, only about, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And so now, now is when the fun start can happen. Um, and so I'm spending the rest of the time just kind of going through each component, adding some styling, adding some fun stuff, and we can go from there. Um, but you know, we have the basic setup, which is uh, which is great. And so let's, I think, stay on the trend of our nav bar. I'd like to add some styles um, to make it <laughs> not look uh, like this. Cool. Also, um, you know, I'm being generally uh, nice to ChatGPT. Just it probably doesn't matter, but you know, be cordial. Um, I wouldn't want, you know, when, when uh, in the future, if your history is checked, you know, I want to be on the good side of history that I was nice to, to the AI. So just one, one, one thing to know. Style going to the nav bar component. I'm gonna be a little bit specific in this part too. Um, I'd like, when I, I think I want maybe icons next to the, uh, next to the, the, the different links I'd like have icons next to the text of the links I'm using React icons, just another NPM package that'll be easy. I'd also like to have my name Keenan in the top left with the rest of the links on the right. Um, the styling should also be modern and sleek. Now I'm just gonna use some really generic generic adjectives just to see what it, uh, let's see what we get. So it's asked, telling us to install React icons, very good. I'm gonna do that. And we'll get back and run this. And let's see what else it is, eh? Cool, we have already know, oops. Um, how our nav bars look. Okay, great, so it's adding some icons here. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna copy this code. And again, I'm just basically blindly copying and pasting the whole thing in, uh, which for the purpose of this, I think is gonna work good enough. It's also asking us for a CSS component which is in the same directory. 
Um, so I'm just gonna just do what it says and add a navbar.css. And let's see, add just all of this tag, this CSS, and see what we get. I'm very curious. Let's navigate back. Cannot find navbar.css. Let's see, did I do it in the right repository? Navbar.css, I did. Interesting module not found. What did I mess up here? Let's ask ChatGPT, shall we? You, you called it narbar.css. Oh, thank you, thank you. I sure did. <laughs> a little nar bar for you. Okay, thank you so much. Cool, and here we go. Here's a nav bar. Um, you know, we have the Keenan in the top left. Let's see, do our routes work, our home page, our about page, our portfolio page, and our contact page? You know, that's not bad. There's a little hover effect. I don't really like the Keenan has a, um, you know, underline and a different color. Let's see, how does it work? Responsive, you know, it's not, not terrible. Um, and so now we can ask for a little bit more specific. But I think that looks, you know, pretty good. It looks like we have a max width here that probably isn't what we want. Um, I'm going to ask for a little bit of uh, a new nav bar and see if we can update some of the styles here. But I think that's pretty good for a first pass. Make some changes to the styling. I'd like an icon next to my name, Keenan. I'd also like Keenan to not have an underline and the white text. Also like the spacing to, um, I don't know, fill the whole nav bar. You also add some fun hover effects. Let's just let's get a little wild, shall we? So it looks like it's adding a little bit more content here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste all of it. And let's see, let's try it again. Let's see if I added some fun hover effects. It looks like I didn't space it out, but I did add that nice. And yeah, I'm not seeing very fun hover effects personally. Um, See if I just remove this max width, if we're getting more. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Let's see, did it try to add some hover? Interesting name hover, icon hover. Yeah, and just the color changing, you know? That doesn't seem fun to me. Um, so I'm gonna ask for a little bit. You update the hover effects on the links for a little more a little more flair. Again, I'm gonna be pretty generic just because I'm mostly just curious what it's gonna do. Um, well, it looks like it's doing a little bit of scaling. Cool, let's try that again. And I do see that max width, um, but instead of I'm just gonna just remove that rather than asking it. Oh, okay, it's adding, a, it's adding an underline. That's, that has some flair, that's better. I wouldn't say it's that much flair. <laughs> But I think that's okay. You know, that's 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 a pretty functional nav bar. I think it doesn't look terrible. Um, I think it's it's good enough for our purposes. I'm sure we could add more stuff if we wanted to. You know, change the color. You can ask for specific colors. If you want specific effects, you can ask for specific effects. Um, but for now, I'm going to call this good enough, so we can move on to some of the other uh, the other bits. Um, cool. So let's move on to the about page. Let's move on to the about component, add some content. And again, I'm gonna be pretty specific in this prompt and see if it can do what, what it can do. Um, uh, a header image um, using a placeholder random URL from, pick some is just like a way to get like a you know placeholder URL that'll just spit something out because I wanna actually upload images right now. Um, Info about me, Keenan. <laughs> I'm a software engineer at Kojo. Um, I like to bake, run, 
and mess around with ChatGPT in my spare time. Also, I'd like to add a skills section that lists some of my skills. Uh, let's see, React, Node, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, Graph, QL, um, Git, whatever. It doesn't really matter. And cool, let's try that and see what it does. So this looks pretty good. You know, added our header image, adding some class names, you know, the about text container, about container, I think it's pretty good. Adding some, you know, a little uh, list here with my skills. So I'm going to go back. I think our nav bar is good for now. Copy and paste all of this. And again, um, add our code here. We're gonna add a new about uh, CSS. Copy and paste that in and see what we get. Huh, yeah, you know, it's basic, uh, but it's there. But again, we can we can add some more flair to this. Um, and so I think it's a good start. Interesting the content before I answer the little bullet points, cool. Not bad, but let's add a more modern style. I'd like the image to be a circle and the skills to um, have a fun hover effect. Something like that, let's see what we get. All right, I asked for more modern look. And yeah, again, you can be a lot more specific. I'm purposely being a little generic, mostly out of curiosity to see what we get. <laughs> oh man, uh, we got our circle. We have, oh man, I don't like this at all. <laughs> it's a hover effect. Um, but I don't, you know, I don't think that it's super great. So then we can be a little bit more, more specific. So let's, let's, let's try that again. Let's update the style of the skills section. The section should, I don't know, let me uh, look like a card. Each of the skills should be a should look more like a like pill kind of um, and have a um, let's see a background um, or a shadow on hover. Let's try that and let's see if we get something a little a little better. Okay. Writing a shadow pill class, interesting, or a skill pill. Um, so I think we're gonna need the corresponding component code here because we don't have a skill pill. I don't think we do. Nope. Um, class, so this probably won't make many changes right now. I can ask, show me that corresponding about.js. Let's see, it's gonna add. Yeah, so now it's adding that skill pill to each of those elements. And so we can see the results. Let's see what we get. Okay. Yeah, they have a little background. You know, it's a lot, it's a lot more specific. It looks like it maybe missed the part about it being in a card, but I like the tags. I think that looks um, a lot better. I still don't really like that banner image um, being rounded. It's not really being a circle. I wonder what it's actually doing. Yeah, it's just adding a border radius of 100. Our max width of 9:50. Um, let's see, what's my time check? Okay, I'm gonna actually move on. I think you know we could we could I'm gonna adjust the CSS so this is a better circle. It looks a little better, that sort of thing. Um, but you know, I think this is not bad. So let's uh, let's move on. I like this little effect. You know, changing the cursor, that sort of thing. Um, oh, interesting. So you might also not might notice too. We have these little dots that show up <laughs> above here. I think I know why that is. Um, and so it looks like we probably have some clashing in CSS. And yeah, right, this is just using, um, just for all, you know, it's gonna be kind of this global CSS, so it's gonna affect all of our list elements. So I think we should just remove that and those will go away. Yeah, cool. It also looks like this styling, so I wonder if I just 
If I just get rid of that, probably be good enough. Yeah, cool. Um, let's do the contact page next. I want to save enough time for the portfolio page and the home page, and we can do a little bit more of the fun stuff. So let's just try to get this one done quickly. All right, let's move on to the contact page. Can you add a form um, with a send button that um, sends an email using the user's local email client? You know, we could do the fancy stuff, you know, set up a back end or use like SendGrid to actually send an email. I'm not going to do that for this session, but I'm sure you could use ChatGPT to help you in that regard. Um, and fills out the content appropriately. Also add some styles that make the contact form feel modern. Feel modern, let's try that. And so, yeah, it looks like it's just, just doing a mail to um, on our handle submit, which I think for the purpose of this is gonna be good enough. Cool, our contact page here. We're gonna add our contact on CSS and we'll see what sort of styles it added. And it looks like it is doing some potential global CSS with these inputs, but I think those aren't gonna overlap. And so let's see what it did. Ooh, <laughs> so again, a little different than the other pages, um, but I don't think it's great. I mean, in this case, we said it's just gonna like open up um, you know, my local email client here. It's not actually filling in the fields. Um, but if we ask, we can probably get that. Update the contact.js component such that the form fields um, are put into the email itself. Let's see if it understands that. It's a little bit. Oh, and code URI component. Interesting. Okay, so it's adding that to the body of the message. Okay, I think that's that's better. I think that's more or less what it, what we're looking for here. And let's, you know, and so we've changed the mail to here, right? So this is actually, you know, Keenan Zucker at gmail.com, which is my email, uh, but not the body. So yeah, let's try that, see if that works. If I say um, person test at test.com. This is, so, oh, I like this. Add the little kind of uh, mono spacing font. That was nice, nice little touch. Let's see if it, cool. So now it opens my email client again, but it gives me the little input of the form, uh, which is nice. So little changes like that, pretty good. We don't need to save that. Cool, so we have our contact page. You know, our about me is basic. I still don't like that much, but it's good enough. Our contact page, I think, looks pretty good. You know, it looks pretty basic. Um, now let's move to the portfolio page, which is often the kind of the, the bread and butter of the um, of the portfolio website. You know, if you want to show off your work. Let's move on to the portfolio page. Again, uh, we could be very generic or we could be very specific. I'm going to be a little bit more, I think, specific in this prompt. Um, you know, we could add a bunch of projects, but I think it's gonna be a little bit easier if, you know, our projects are coming from, um, you know, if we had like a backend, they'd be coming from that, you know, if you're gonna have pulling from a different source. I think for our case, maybe we can just create like a projects.json that holds all of our, all of our projects um, and then displays them in the components. So I'm gonna ask for that. The project data should come from a projects.json file. The, yeah, the projects should be displayed in a gallery, maybe like a responsive gallery. Gallery. Um, each project should contain details or should contain a, um, like a title, description, Again, we're going to use an image like placeholder, random URL image using Pixum and pry and like links. So we can create like, you know, links out to something else. I want to show these 
projects. And we'll just make some some projects here. Um, so let's see. All right, what projects I want to show? Maybe like uh, what I've been working on recently. Um, a uh, OCR document scanning feature. A you no, know, I don't know performance improvements. <laughs> you can fill out your information here. Um, you know, like a web scraper project. A mobile app barcode scanner barcode scanner and uh this <laughs> portfolio website cool all right so that's a little bigger problem very specific let's see what we get um cool so now it's spitting out like i asked for our projects at json so rather than just adding all that code in react you can iterate through that that looks pretty good to me looks like project.json are just being in the same directory so I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna just add a projects.json. You know, it should probably be in like a different folder, blah, 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 blah. But, um, you know, at least it has some links, it has some images, it gave us some content of what it thinks the projects are, which is, uh, which is cool. And I'm also gonna add our portfolio.css, which I'm sure it'll do. And let's see. Okay, so here, yeah, here's a good example of when, uh, you know, the output can only be so many characters. And so when there's a really big response, you know, all this JSON, it's just gonna stop. And so you can just ask um, it to, to give us, to give us more. So um, can you show me portfolio.js, please? Great. Interesting. Oh, it's doing some different links. That's kind of fun. Oh, it's adding some images and even ask or for those icons. Oops, sorry, that's in CSS. I want it to be in here. And let's look at the, oh, it didn't give us the CSS. Maybe the corresponding portfolio.css. Nice, it looks like it's using a display grid, some repeat. And it's using a max width, that's a little bit better. Ooh, it looks like it's doing some hover effects. Maybe it's, it's learning that I like hover effects. Um, Oh, interesting. Oh, it says to include it on this file. Weird. Anyways, I'm going to just copy and paste this. And portfolio.css. Let's add this project links and let's see what we got. Ooh, now look at that. <laughs> now I kind of like it. Oh, there's two different links they can do. Even the links have a little bit of a hover effect. It has a little bit of a drop shadow. You know, these come up. Let's look at the responsiveness. Yeah, that's pretty good, right? I'm pleasantly surprised after the about page, I was kind of disappointed, but this one, this one's pretty good. It has some nice hover effects. Um, you know, it looks like it has some issues with, with some text overlapping, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, it looks like the text is getting off page. Um, yes, yeah, so let's, let's ask, let's ask and see what it does. But I think that's pretty, I'm pretty impressed with that one. Um, can you update? the styling of the projects right now the titles and descriptions are being cut off again i'm not asking for specifically like oh update it using this i'm just saying the problem so i'm curious if it's going to solve that and we will see how it does and I'm not really reading all the things that it's doing. I'm mostly just copying and pasting and hoping. Um, and let's see what it does. We're back here, oops. And let's see, did it do that? And it looks like it did not. <laughs> yeah, oh, and that's that's the same. Um, let's see, I'm curious now, if we actually look at the code, if we can investigate project links, let's see, project details, add. Details, position, translate, border radius. Which details H2. So it did, oh, it did a text, a text overflow of ellipsis, um, which isn't really what we want here. So if I change this, I think it's just, is it a wrap? Is that the CSS class? Project details, will that fix it? No, I mean, I'm wrong here. It's been a while. Um, anyways, you know, we could go back and forth and ask for a little bit more specifics here on how to get this, but. I think for the for the time being, I'm going to call it I'm going to call it good enough because I'm overall pretty 
pretty impressed with how with how that looks. Um, and these links, let's see, <laughs> example.com slash blog slash performance. That's great. That's a great URL. Oh, and see, it did actually use the GitHub example um, for these icons, which I think that's that's pretty, pretty good. Example.com. I like the placeholder images. I think they're pretty nice. Um, cool. So yeah, just because we're, you know, we'll have about 12, 15 minutes left. I want to move on and show some other more uh, fun stuff. I mean, this is all pretty fun, but there's some even more fun stuff that we can show, um, which I'm going to do on our homepage here. So, so far, you know, maybe this doesn't have a ton of visual consistency, um, but I think those are all things you could certainly tweak and it can do a lot of these sections uh, pretty well. But let's move on to our home page and work on call that good enough. Let's see, gave them a max height and overflow property, prevent them from getting cut off. So yeah, I gave them an overflow property, but didn't really give them the right overflow property. Um, actually, I just, want, I just want to ask, can we have the text wrap instead? Let's just see if it gets them. If we asked it to add some accessibility to the code, what would that look Ooh, like? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, I'm going to just see if it does this real quick, and then I will try exact that prompt. Thank you. Cool. So yeah, it looks like it's the same thing. That's a bummer. But yeah, let's talk about accessibility. Um, how could I add? Um, how can I make? the portfolio page more accessible. Let's see. Yeah, so there's some pretty good stuff here, right? Using ARIA attributes, using color contrast. Yeah, a lot of these things I feel like I've, I've heard before, right? Using alt images. I think, was it using that? I wonder. Oh, would it provide the code for you to just copy and paste? So like it would automatically I provide it? would. Yeah, Let's give it a go. All right, let's see. Right, so it looks like it is using some labels here. Oh, cool. Let's see, I wonder if it's doing some other stuff. Let's see what it asked for, the alt attribute. It looks like it did for the images here, the project.title, that's pretty smart. Yeah. Probably won't visual. Oh, see, now I got brand new, I got brand new images, nice. Um, I have the same issue, but yeah, that's pretty good. That was really, really, really great question. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Well, let's move on to the homepage now and show a couple of other of the other fun stuff. Um, cool. Let's move on to the home.js page. Can you add some content and start? I'm going to be super, super vague and just see what it gives us. Looks like it gives us a little about me section. Sure. And we're going to need a home note CSS. Let's see what it gives. Sorry, let's go back. Yeah, that's fine. That's cool. That's about what I expected. Um, it's basically, you know, just using our other stuff. I have a passion for creating beautiful functional applications. I'm always looking for new challenges. <laughs> you can find me in the kitchen whipping up something delicious as well. It's very, it's very nice, very nice. And video games, that's interesting because I didn't actually specify that, but it also knows uh, and thinks that I'm a software engineer. So it's making uh, the conclusions there for us. Very fun. Um, cool, so now I'm gonna basically ask for some ideation. And I mentioned this before, um, but it's pretty good at at least, you know, coming up with ideas. Maybe the ideas aren't super novel, but at least it's a good jumping off point. Um, so I'm gonna ask again, kind of an open-ended question about uh, making this website stand out a little bit. What could I do to make this um, page stand out? And let's see what it says. Cool, yeah, adding animations, adding bold typography, images or graphics, using color effectively, a unique layout, interactive elements. I think those are all, uh, those are all pretty good suggestions. Um, I can also then iterate on those things. So I like the idea of 
know, maybe adding an animation or adding a background that's kind of interesting. Um, and so I think I'm gonna ask for like an animating, like rainbow background and see what it gives us. Add a, yeah, a animating rainbow background that smoothly animates through the <laughs> rainbow. And that's pretty uh, repetitive. Um, to the home component, please. And this looks like it's the same. I don't know if it did anything different. Oh, it looks like it just did in between two colors. I'm curious. Let's see, I will update this. That looks very similar to me. And let's see what it did with the CSS. <laughs> Interesting, and your gradient it looks like it's just doing two colors. Mm. You know, it's okay. It's okay, it's not taking up the full screen. It looks like it is animating, although, oh yeah, it's like a 15 seconds. I'm sure if we change that to like two seconds, it'll probably move a little faster. Yeah, there we go. Um, but I'm gonna add, ask for a little bit more. Um, can the background cover rainbow background cover the full um, screen and can you add some more colors to <laughs> the rainbow? <gasps> add some more colors to the rainbow. Okay, I don't think that changed. So I'm not gonna see if it doesn't. Looks like we are adding a bit more colors. Oh, it made that at 25 seconds. That's even slower. I was just gonna update that myself. And let's see. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So now it also put it on top of the other stuff. Oh, two seconds is too fast. Okay. Interesting. So I wonder how did it just add like a Z index? Yeah, position absolute. Now this is covering my nav bar. Please fix. Yeah, it's asking us for a, a Z index. I guess, oh, interesting, is this? The, I wonder if that's the same navbar component as before, because it's been a while since we touched the navbar component. So let's just give it a go. Let's see, where's our navbar? Oh, did it do that max width thing again? It did not. Interesting, so I added a Z index. Doesn't look like that worked. A higher max. Okay, what if we just, that's not very high. Let's add. I'm sure all engineers have done that before. Just add a bunch of zeros to your Z index, see what happens. Looks like it did not work. Please update and now the home component accordingly. Yeah, the home connect. Okay, so we're going to give a minus. Sure. Sure. Why not? Let's see if we can do that. Where's our home.cs? Yes. Change that again to five. Oops. Let's try that. Okay, and the nav bar did. Okay, I'm going to go back and, uh, and change my nav bar back because I think it changed some stuff. Okay. There we go. All right, so that's a little bit better. Um, still, <laughs> still a little jarring, though, if I'm going to be honest. So that's, uh, yeah, we'll call, we'll call it five. Um, that's a little bit better. I think that's not bad. You know, we can do some kind of unique CSS that would maybe take a little bit longer to do normally. Um, and I'm gonna try to do one more big thing here before I open it up for any more uh, questions. And this can be a little bit more uh, specific, but uh, we can also use ChatGPT, you know, for ideation. Um, and I think another one is, you know, there's a lot of like free APIs on the internet that you can use to add some flair. Um, so I'm gonna ask about how we can both, you know, get ideas about APIs and then actually implement them as well. Um, I'd like to use a free API to add some more flair to my home page. What do you suggest? 
Cool news, random joke, random image. Yeah, see, it's Pixum, you know, using a joke container, that sort of thing, a random quote, using a weather API, yeah, you know, using news. I don't want to be, <laughs> I don't know about a news component. Um, but yeah, I think those are all pretty decent ideas. Um, tell me more about a random image. What options are there? Oh, interesting. You're in body stream. Huh. I wonder if it's just a glitch or if there's okay, it looks like that was a glitch. On pick some pixels, pixel bay. Sure. It was better <laughs> than glitching out. Yeah, not bad. Um, but yeah, what kind of images do I want to do? Maybe we want to do something specific. Um, so how about images of cats and dogs? What? How do I use there? The cat API and the dog API. Cool. So now, now, now we're talking. Um, so now I'm going to add, ask a very specific problem because I was thinking about this uh, before. So okay, if we can add, if we can get random images, right? How about let's we'll let you show. Let's just say, okay, let's add a random cat image and a random dog image to the home.js component. And so we can, you know, we don't need to look up the documentation for this API. Um, we don't need to, you know, understand like the React hooks that we're using here. Um, oh, it is interesting that it's using Axios, which is a separate package. So I'm gonna ask it to, to change that. Um, and you try again using fetch rather than Axios, just so we don't have to download another thing. Cool. Copy this, go back in. Oh, looks pretty good so far. Responding CSS to nicely show the cat and dog images. Ah, so it looks like it's just giving us the CSS for this, which is nice. So we can just add this to our existing CSS here. Let's see what we get. Yeah, okay, that's not bad. Oh, it looks like we lost our home container. Home container, maybe we didn't. Interesting, wondering why our, our rainbow background went away. Um, so it looks like get some different images, some different sizes. Um, so what I'd like to do is add a um, add a little game, basically. I'd like to update the home dot this component to to show to still show a random cat and and random dog image. But when you click either one, we get a new image for each and a score, cat score or a dog score increases. And so I'm just gonna be very, very specific here, um, but we're asking for a bit more advanced feature set here. Um, and yeah, that looks pretty good so far, right? This is doing a lot more kind of advanced stuff that would take some time to write ourselves. And so I'm gonna, again, I'm just gonna copy and paste the whole thing and I'm gonna see what we get. I'm gonna also ask for some new styling. You add some new styles for this page. I want the images to be equal size and centered on the page, something like that. Just so we have a little bit more consistency here. Uh, I'm gonna just change this, I think, because I think it's all it changed. All right. Okay, so we didn't get the, oh, that's not bad though. We didn't get the CSS that we were looking for here. Oh, that's because we're not importing the CSS. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, that is interesting. <laughs> so let's try again with that. Oh, there we go. This is what we were looking for. Um, we got our rainbow back. We have a cat, we have a dog. We can click and we get a new random images of that. So we kind of have a built, you know, battle. Oh, shoot. Okay, I like that dog better. I like that dog better. I like that cat better. I definitely like that cat better. And so these, you know, we now we have a little game on our website, right? We've interacted enough. I feel like this is pretty good. And it's a pretty, you know, a bit more complex, right? We're not just showing elements. We're actually creating a little game using, you know, two or three prompts. Um, and yeah, so that's, I think, good enough for this website. For the final step, we're going to deploy it uh, live. We're going to deploy it on the internet. For that, I'm going to use uh, Vercel just because it's super easy. I already have the command line tool installed. I'm just going to run uh, for cell deploy. Yes, I'm going to do this directory. I already have an account. I'm not going to link to an existing project. Sure, that's the website. That's the directory. And it's going to just do the stuff. It's going to maybe take a minute or so. Um, no. And so there already are some nice settings. It understands create React app. Um, but hopefully by the end, we have the site live. Looks like, oh, we're, we're a couple minutes over. So sorry if folks have to drop. Um, but I just wanted to get this last bit because I thought it was pretty fun. Um, but yeah, as that is going, um, what questions or suggestions do you have? Yeah, any questions um, or suggestions or stuff that they want to see me try in these last couple minutes here? Looks like we're still building this site. Um, I can't see the chat, so I'm going to move to the a section. Okay. Yeah, I see someone added a question about accessibility. Great, yeah, if you wanna put any other questions in the chat here, feel free to. Marcel does have a free, free tier account. Um, same with ChatGPT. Uh, all the things I've been using here are basically, are basically free. And great, I'm gonna share my screen again and just show the last bit. Entire screen, allow. Oops, sorry for the <laughs> infinite screen here. And we have Vercel. And we have a production site. We can go to it. I'm gonna go in the incognito tab just so we, you know. And here's our site, we're live. We did it in a little over an hour. Um, we have a cat and dog game that's pulling out random images. Can we you share it in the chat? Page. Yes, good idea. I would love to click on that. That's actually yeah. very cool. Let me add it to the chat here. There we go. There it is in the chat, I'll pin it also. <laughs> Um, oops, that was, and uh, yeah, feel free, to, feel free to mess around. I'm sure there's some other some other issues that we're having. Um, but cool, that is it. That's all I have for you. Thank you so much for joining. Really appreciate it. Thank you for the comments and suggestions. And um, I'm happy to stick around if folks have any other questions. But if you want to hop off, uh, feel free to. And uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much. If you want to, you know, have any other questions. Feel free to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn. My name is Keenan Zucker. Uh, you know, tweet at me. I don't have a large Twitter uh, presence, but if you want to, um, or email me at keenanzucker at gmail.com. Uh, you can use, you know, the form on that website that we just created. I think it'll maybe send me an email, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> thank you. That was really great. Cool. Thank you so much. All righty. I'm going to, yeah, any, any last, any last questions? Ask. Thanks for sharing your time with us, Kenan. Cool. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Yeah, and the recording should be going up in the next, uh, you know, month or, or sorry, week or so on Code Mentor. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Uh, you know, they, Code Mentor handles the the, the recording in bits, so um, it'll be up, and uh, we'll I'll, I'll post again on like maybe my LinkedIn or something when uh, when that recording's up. So thank you so much. Cool. Alrighty, I'm gonna end it. Thank you so much. Appreciate everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. You too. Thank you.